Thank you, Professor Francisco. So uh, good morning or good afternoon, everybody. Uh, as Professor Francisco said, my name is Barbara, and this work is being done actually together with Marcus and Viviani. And it is entitled, Is There an Alternative Mechanism to Explain the Negative Carbon-13 Anomalies in the Western South Atlantic During Inherent Stages? So actually, it is commonly believed that the main mechanism for this ne negative anomalies in this region is the ocean circulation, more specifically the weakening of the AMOC, and we want to know if there's something else. So obviously ocean circulation plays an important role to set the isotopic composition in the water column. So it is important to have in mind that the Western South Atlantic is characterized by um, three water masses. One of them is the Northern component water, which carries the North Atlantic deep water. And the other two are southern component waters, which are Antarctic intermediate water and Antarctic bottom water. So there are other components that can alter the carbon-13 composition in the water column. And this isotopic um, composition signature depends on source signal, surface primary production, organic matter remineralization, air sea gas exchange, and the ocean circulation itself. So these negative anomalies were identified and are continuously corroborated by carbon-13 reconstructions from benthic foraminifera of different marine sediment cores with the strongest ones occurring during important millennial scale events known as Herrich stages. Uh, these events were named after Herrich in 1988 because he was the one who first described them uh, studying marine sediment cores. And here, just to illustrate a little bit better, we compared these five marine sediment cores from previous work. Here we have the carbon-13 uh, isotopic signature. And in this gray area, we have the Henry Stage 01, uh, which has the negative anomalies that we want to investigate better. So, these events correspond to abrupt climate changes and are characterized by an antiphase interatmospheric temperature pattern and are most likely explained by changes in the AMOX strain during to, due to freshwater discharge into high latitude North Atlantic waters. So to accomplish our goals, uh, here we use the C-Gene model, which is an intermediate complexity Earth system model. Uh, designed to allow long-term simulations from 100 to 100,000 years with lower spatial resolution. And to understand fundamental features of the ocean biogeochemistry and marine sediments interactions to atmospheric CO2 and climate feedback. Uh, so we designed our experiments varying only the remineralization depth while all other variables were fixed to a pre-industrial levels to pre-industrial levels, sorry. So we conducted four experiments um, with 10,000 years run, and the remineralization depths we used were, first one, the default, which is um, 589.9 meters, and then um, we did 1.5, two, and three times the default remineralization depth. So here we have like uh, the table where we can compare the model output with the carbon-13 signature. Here are the values recovered from the marine sediment course, where we can see that during heritage stage one, we had three of them um, uh, presented negative anomalies. Well, our model output was far from what we expected, presenting positive values and way higher um, than what is observed on marine sediment cores. So here were our first results in images. So this one was the experiment with the default remineralization depth. This one is 1.5, two and three times. And in red, we have marked the marine sediment cores. So what we observed was the the more we increase the remineralization depth, the more we increase the carbon-13 isotopic signature as well. Same thing happened with the soft oxygen, which was the only tracer we used here. So 
here from the default until the three times the default, we had a small increase of oxygen uh, in the water column. So here is only the difference to um, assure uh, that actually we had an increasing of carbon 13 and not negative anomalies from the default to 1.5 to and three times the default remineralization depth. Same with oxygen. So the conclusions until this part of the, the work were that changes in carbon 13 values are rather small and even the opposite of what we first expected. Uh, also increasing only remineralization depth in the C gene proved to be insufficient to explain those negative anomalies. We also think that the anomalies were the results of an increased northern component water residence time due to a weekend day mug, uh, corroborating with uh, previous work. But we also want to go further with this study. And so far, we changed a little bit the experiments, and now we are lowering the remineralization depths. Here are some previous results where um, we run uh, one of the experiments with. 0 0.75, um, the default remineralization depth, and half of the default. And we can see that uh, carbon, the isotopic signature, uh, it is also lowering, not as much as we expected, but it is better, better result than we had before. Uh, here, again, the difference um, between the default and the 0 0.75 depth and half of the default depth. And also, um, another thing that we are going to do is a comparison between carbon and phosphate, because phosphate is only affected by circulation and organic matter cycling. And oxygen additionally has air-C gas exchange, so uh, maybe it is not the best tracer for us to use here. So, so far, that's it. Thank you all. I would I like to thank, I'd like to thank here Marcus and Viviani who could not be here today, but are like uh, the core of this, this, this work. Uh, to Professor Francisco for the, the amazing course that he gave us and the, for the opportunity for us to be presenting our, our projects here today. Also to Dr. Malin and Jamie who have been working with us and helping us from the beginning with C-Gene experiments and um, with the hypotheses and drafts of this work. And also to all of you that are here, uh, thank you all for your attention. And if you have any questions, I'm all ears.